الأمجاد بانيها ومن يسعى إلى العليا سيدركها بما فيها ويبني مجده جدلا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. For those of you who are not Muslims, may peace and Allah's guidance and blessings be upon you all. Uh, quickly, today I'm going to be dealing with an aspect of the Bible that uh, most people don't want to venture. Why? Because um, we Muslims are trained not to criticize the Bible. I mean, it's very unusual that uh, you see uh, Muslims attacking the Bible. But we have a lot of Christian so called apologists that continue to uh, uh, insult the Quran and make uh, information that is not consistent with uh, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as such. Uh, we believe that a book was given to Moses, uh, uh, Torah, we believe a book was given to Jesus in jail and a book was given to David which is which we call the Zabur or the Psalms of David and uh, many other books that were given to earlier prophet that is not even mentioned in the Bible nor in the Quran. And so I believe any book that claims to have come from God have to have information that is so consistent with logic, reason, scientific. It should make sense in that people would use that book as a basis of life. And so therefore today, I'm going to be talking on, uh, is the Bible the word of God? Yes, is the Bible the word of God? The Bible that we hear all the time, is it the word of God? Really, um, to begin with, the word Bible does not say, um, my name is the Bible and that I came from God. Uh, this is a, something different that I'm going to be dealing with in my other video, but just so you could understand. The second point I'm going to make is that if you look at uh, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 9 verse 20 all the way to verse 24, which talks about uh, Noah. Uh, in that part of the Bible, Noah is being portrayed as someone that got drunk. You know, he, he became so drunk and booze and he was walking down and uh, he fell and uh, he's just walking stuck naked, no clothes on. And one of his son, Ham, you know, was walking by and he saw his nakedness and he went and told his other bre brethren, Shem and Japheth, and they came backward and covered Noah with the clothes because they don't want to see his manhood. They don't want to see his, you know, he's, he's all naked. That's what, you know. And so it's very, very funny. We find that uh, very... Uh, unspiritual in Islam. Uh, Allah does not mention that. Yeah. So you see how the Bible portrayed Noah, you know, like that. Uh, in Islam, we don't accept that uh, because the Quran said, Wassalamu ala nuh innahu min ibadana salihin. Wassalamu ala nuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon nuh. And he's among of the seven that we have sent. So Noah was sent to guide mankind. And so therefore, we don't believe that he was walking stuck naked out in the street. Then we read again in the book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 30, where we found Prophet Lot, a, a man of God. Um, he was in the cave with his two daughters. And somehow um, the elder daughter uh, came to her younger sibling and she said, you know what, we don't have men in this area around. So why don't we give our daddy... Um, some wine so he could drink and then we we're gonna have sex with him and so they gave him the wine and they had sex and she had sex with him the following day the younger one also said well it's my turn so they gave him the wine again I don't know how he keep drinking this wine but that's what the Bible said and he drank the wine and the younger one went and had sexual relationship with him and they both became pregnant so if you read in the Bible if you see Moabite and um, Ammonite or Benanite these are the children of incest you know that uh, daughters of uh, Lord had sex with their father and they had the children so this is incest in the Bible incest is a sexual relationship with two people that are so closely related that they can't even get married but that's what the Bible is so I, I'm just wondering what what is God Almighty uh, teaching us now if you leave that one you go to the second Samuel chapter 11 verse 12 it also portrayed that um, David was in his household and he looked upon, you know, the yard and he saw a woman in the other house taking a shower and he saw her nakedness and he loved it. And he told his friends or his companions to go and bring her. So they went and brought her in and he had sexual relationship with her. And when he enjoyed that relation so much, he sent a letter uh, uh, to be given to um, uh, her husband who is called Uriah and to take it to um, the war zone area where the, the Israelites were fighting. And so they put him on the wall front, I mean wall front, um, and he was eventually killed. 
and David took the wife and uh, brought her to his house and he continued to have relationship with her. So in this uh, narration, we found that um, Moses is a rapist, number one. Number two, he's a murderer. But in the Quran, the Quran said, Wassalamu ala Dawood, innahu min ibadina salihin. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon Noah, I mean, upon David. He's among our righteous servant. And if he's a righteous servant in the Quran, how would you say the Quran, you know, is a book that's not from Allah? Really, we portray all the messengers. We say, La min samina wa We make no distinction among the Prophet of Allah mentioned in the Quran and, and in the Bible. But so in the Quran, we respect them more than what you see in the Bible. So is this the word of God? What is God teaching us? that i don't understand so you have to explain to me even jesus was not left alone in the book of genesis chapter 38 you read from verse 1 all the way to verse 26 down the line you would find that um uh, um, uh judah he had a sexual relationship with his daughter-in-law can you believe that can you imagine that in the book of god god almighty go out of his way to explain to us that judah had a sexual relationship with his daughter-in-law what happened was um, his two uh, sons married her previously and they both died. So she was in the house hoping and waiting that the next son, the last son of uh, uh, Judah will be, uh, will be grown up and eventually he would be married to uh, Tamar. So um, a time came and left and Judah did not allow her uh, to marry uh, him, one of his sons, because upon her account two of his sons are dead. And so one day she heard that uh, Judah uh, was going to Timna. To share his goats. I mean, he have some livestock. He wanna go and take care of them. So she went to the gate side or the or the wayside where she knows if, uh, eventually uh, Judah is gonna pass by. So she lay down there and she kind of cover her head and leave a little part of her limb outside. You know, like prostitute how they do. So when Judah, the messenger, the prophet of God or man of God, who was the leader of the house of Israel at that time, so he saw her and he said. Who is this? And he went on to her and he said, Woman, allow me to have a sexual relationship with thee. And she said unto, me, on, unto him, What would you give me? And, uh, and uh, he said, I will give you a flock from my ship when I come back from Timna. And she said, Okay, what guarantee do I have that you want to give it back to me? And uh, he asked her, What guarantee do you want? And she said, I want your staff and your bracelet. And he took it and he gave it to her. And the Bible said, And he went and had a sexual intercourse with her. And then uh, he left and went to Timna. On his way coming, sure enough, he brought a small goat to give it to her and collect his staff and uh, signet. But she was not there. So eventually he went home. He couldn't find her. So a few months and she got pregnant. When she got pregnant, uh, the, uh, the pregnant became so big. And eventually uh, she can't hide it. So they uh, arrested her in the house of Judah. They said, oh, uh, they brought her, they brought, uh, her to Judah was the leader of the Israel at that time and he said um, oh Tamar you brought shame in the house of Judah uh, go and kill her so he gave uh, a directive that she should go and beheaded and kill somehow because she brought shame into the house then she said wait 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 whoever um, owned this stuff and the bracelet is the one that that that, that, that made this to me so when the people realized that it was Judah who had sexual relations with her, everybody was in shame and they put their head down. And the Bible said, and Judah did not have sexual intercourse with her again. Can you imagine this in the word of God? This sounds like pornography, right? But that is in the word of God. So you tell me, is this the word of God? Well, the story continued. When it's time for Tamar to get pregnant, I mean to um, have a baby, uh, she had twins. Twins, the first one is called Zari, and the second one is called Fari. And this Zari and Fari are on to become the great grandfathers of Jesus Christ. Children of incest, children of bastardry. They are the ones that are on to become the great grandfathers of Jesus Christ who is supposed to be God. This is an insult to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where do you read that? The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. It reads, This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And Abraham got Isaac, and Isaac got Judah, Jacob, and Jacob got Judah, and Judah got Zare and Phare with Tamar. So these, and then Tamar eventually had a daughter who is called Mary, and Mary begot Jesus Christ. So the whole story is telling you and I that Jesus came from a bastard ancestrally. 
according to the Bible. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not making this. It is in the Bible, Genesis 38. Read law and don't say Muhammad Awal have created something in the Bible. I didn't do that. I'm just reading your statement. I'm reading your account. So you tell me, how come a man that have no father, you give him more than thousands of great grandfathers and amongst them is this daughter who was, you know, came from, you know, bastardry because she was an incest. So now you tell me the Bible or the Quran, which is the word of God. And I challenge anyone to give me any information that is consistent or inconsistent with, the, with, with reasoning and logic, you can find that in the Quran. So definitely, this is something that we are saying that the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the Bible, definitely, uh, the, the messengers and prophets, not even Jesus was left out, uh, they make all this information to him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.